Hey everyone, Matt here and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going through my top 10 rare mythic cards from the new Corset 2021. So today I'm going through my top rare mythic cards. Now like I always say, these are just my personal choices and these are for standard. There's a lot of cards in here that I think we'll be seeing multiple plays in different formats, EDH and stuff like that. So maybe some of those cards didn't make my list. But if you still think they're great, you can put them on there. But this video is obviously dedicated just for standard playable cards. If you haven't seen my best commons and uncommon videos, there's two videos that come out the last two days. There'll be links below and probably little flashes up above as well. So make sure you check them out as well. But without further ado, let's get on to my first card. And it's Elder Gargaroth. 6-6, six, six, 5 mana beast. Mythic card, Vigilance, Reach, Trample. This card has a lot of text. Whenever Elder attacks or blocks, choose one. You get to create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Gain three life or draw a card. Green, this is going to be great for that mono green deck in that five mana stage. I just think this is really good. 6-6, six, six, you can't always use it. Well, it dies to removal. Yes, a lot of creatures do die to removal. But you look at what you're getting for this. This is a big 6-6 six, six for just five mana. So it's under costed for what you're actually getting. You're getting the Vigilance, Reach, Trample. It's going to go over the top. It can block Flyers. Green needs a little bit of help with that. It's really good. And whenever it attacks, you're getting this. You get to choose one, create another creature, gain some life or draw a card. For me, definitely going to be putting this in EDH, but this is for standard. I think this is certainly going to see play. Roll on the beasts. So the next card on my list is Teferi, Master of Time. I had to put this in there. I think it's a really sweet card. Not as oppressive as the Time Raveler. We've got to get that straight in there. This is a four mana Planeswalker, not three. Comes in with three loyalty as well. Has a plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Minus three, target creature you control phases out. And the minus ten, take two extra turns after this one. Wow. And you can activate loyalty abilities of Teferi on any player's turn, anytime you cast an instant crazy good obviously edh you're thinking but i still think this is going to see some play in standard it's a good it's a card drawing engine as well draw discard and if you can get to that minus 10 oh that'll be sweet maybe get an elder spell in there and get opponents obviously planeswalkers and tick this up as quick as you can but to fairy master time for me is definitely going to see some standard play but more importantly, won't be as strong as the previous Teferi, which hopefully means it won't get so much hate, because I do love a little blue Planeswalker, but Teferi is a sweet, sweet card. Talking of Planeswalkers, back in standard is Ugin the Spirit Dragon, Mythic costing 8. 8 is nothing, because you know how much ramp is being pushed in standard is hideous ramp 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 everywhere this is a game winning planeswalker though plus two deals three damage to any target the minus x exile each permanent with coveting of course exile less it's one or more colors as well it's a board sweeper it gets rid of everything though it's permanent the minus 10 gain seven life draw seven cards put seven permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield wicked Get this up, ticked up, do the minus 10, it's going to be fun. Comes in with 7 loyalty as well, because it does cost 8 mana, but it's going to be so easily played before that 8th turn. It's going to be ramped in super, super quick. If anyone has worked out how quick you can get an Ugin in with the new cards, let me know in the comments below. Talking of ramp, Azusa, Lost But Seeking, what a great reprint this was. You may play 2 additional lands on each of your turns. Wicked, a 1-2, it is legendary, but only costs 3 mana. You definitely should be able to get this down earlier and then just play those lands. And what I'm saying about with Ugin, ramping in, mono green ramp, bant ramp, all the ramps are going to be loving this card and loving Ugin as well. Azusa is certainly going to see play and it's a very, very welcome reprint. Now we go to red. This could see play in other formats. But it's going to be seen playing standard. It's Chandra's Incinerator. It costs six, apparently. Don't think it's ever going to cost six, though. It's a six six elemental. It costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non combat damage dealt to your opponents that turn. Shock them, do everything, do anything. You know, maybe have a calamity in there, then just play this. This is going to be absolutely amazing. He has Trample as well for this red card. Amazing. Whenever you source, you control deals non combat damage to an opponent. The Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls as well. 
This card is going to be an absolute house for red and maybe Grawl and everything else in between. It's going to see play. It's an absolutely amazing card for me. And it's definitely in the top 10 rares for standard for me. We get some protection from Shatter the Sky and all those mass removal spells. Heroic Intervention is back and it lowers the price, which is really good because this was getting really out of hand. It was like close to $20. Permanence you control gain Hexproof and Indestructible end of turn. Instant speed, two mana. Well, green gets green's getting a lot of love. Green is getting a lot of love in these um, you know future sets. People will say it's Simic in total, but you know, Heroic Intervention is going to be a sweet, sweet card. Maybe possibly Cyborg. Maybe people obviously in Best of Ones will be playing it in the main board as well. But it's definitely going to see play. Another welcome reprint. And it's going to lower those prices for us all to get hold of them. In case you want to play it in other formats, maybe like EDH. I think it's going to become more viable now. And at Rare as well, it means you're going to be pulling them in your booster boxes. Ruined Halo is the next card on my list. Double white enchantment. Ends the battle, choose a card name. You have protection from the chosen card name. That is going to be strong. You're going to be able to protect yourself. Turn two. Control probably going to be in the sideboard. Still, that's going to be, you know, it's still going to see play, though. It's going to give you protection from any sort of card name, which means you can't be targeted, dealt damage, or enchanted by anything with that name. You could even banter opponents and maybe put it on their thought erasures or something like that. Just, just give yourself protection. Ruined Halo is a very sweet card. I think, you know, it is a sideboard card. But control players oh, and other people are going to be playing this without a doubt. Runes Halo, yet again, another great reprint. Final three cards now. And one of my favourite cards have been put back into standard is Scavenging Ooze. I love this. Like I said, Green's getting some sweet, sweet, sweet cards. This is a 2-2 Ooze for two mana. You pay the green exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, put a 1-1 counter on the Ooze and you gain one life. Uro, you're going to hate this card. We can get this down turn two. You can then play your Uro turn three, and then we can exile it next turn. Absolutely amazing. Scavenging Ooze is going to do serious work. Sideboard, probably main board as well. There's going to be lots of decks that are playing green that will just play Scavenging Ooze because it's just, it's just value. It's a great card. I've played it in modern as well, and it's definitely going to see play back in standard. So number two on my list, although these weren't in any specific order, Veto Thorn of the Dusk Rose. One, three, two, and a black vampire cleric is legendary. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. That is amazing. A revitalize where you draw a card and gain three life could be a kill spell. Amazing. Three double black creatures you control gain lifelink until end of turn. One, three, good stats as well. This is a brilliant card. I am going to be building a life gain deck and I'm going to be winning games with a Revitalize just because I love that card as well. This is a really, really sweet card. Love the art on it as well. Veto Thorn of Dusk Rose. Although this is definitely going to be standard playable, I will maybe, yeah, I think I'll be using this as a little commander. Uh, Veto Thorn of Dusk Rose, great card, and is in there as a top rare for me from Corset 2021. And as we get on to the final, final cards... It is Subline Epiphany. It had to be in there. The Blue Mage in me you put this in it, but it is an amazing cryptic command, isn't it? For double blue instant, choose one or more. So not just choose two. For that extra two mana, you get to choose one or more. So let's choose them all. Counter target spell. Counter target activated or triggered ability. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Create a token as a copy of a target creature. We control and target player draws a card. This card is bonkers. This card is amazing. I love this card. I need to get this in all my decks. Standard play, without a doubt. Don't worry about that six mana. It is going to be an amazing card. I definitely want to pick some of these up. I love the versatility of it. You can choose one or more, so it doesn't always have to be to counter that target spell. You can create a token at the end of turn, maybe draw a card, return a permanent. This card just has so much. I just love it. I just absolutely love it. It's the perfect card and definitely, I think, like Shark Typhoon was my favourite card in the previous set, I can definitely see this being my favourite card from the set. Subline Epiphany is in the top rare mythics from 2021 core set. So this was my top 10 list for the standard playable cards. 
rare mythic status in Corset 2021. Let me know in the comment section. I want to know what you think, which cards you are looking forward to. So not necessarily, I've not, like I said before, these are my personal choices. It's not the thing of missing any out. It's literally these are my choices that I think will be standard playable. Let me know what you're excited about from the set. I would really like to know. And if you haven't seen the uncommons and the common video yet, please go and check that out as well. If you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button and of course subscribe. We're on the way, on the way to 8,000 subs. We're going to get there. We'll be with your help. It's going to be there very, very soon. Anyway, you lot take care and I will see you on the next video.